So what's up TLC? Um, Sam and PT here again with uh, another Breaking Bread. So last time we did a video on the Eucharist. And if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check it out. But today, here it's close to Thanksgiving. And um, you know, I actually don't have a really good bread in mind. But... Well, because you need it, I'm gonna give you this recipe today. It is one of my fan favorites. It's from down south. It's my savory, spicy, beautiful cornbread that I got from this cake from Duck Dynasty. But you know, you guys might not know that. Love it. Dude, I spent some time in the South too. Did like, you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back, back Boone, get a little <laughs> Southern in me. Yeah, Boone Town. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, mm. but um, yeah, uh, so I know a little thing or two about the South, and uh, I've heard about cornbread. Mm -hmm. We're doing the OG recipe, right? Just uh, some, we got some cornmeal. It's just, and then salt and water, right? Is it just... No, oh. no, whoa, okay, no, no. That's, that's for, that's, that's like, no, that's like for like ghetto, that's ghetto cornbread, man. I'm talking mm. about like, well, we're, we're a little bit more bougie nowadays, so the, the cornbread here is, it's, mwah, okay? Not like that. Okay. Yeah. So, like, I know that they evolved a lot more because it was just originally cornbread and yeah. then they just put some salt, a little salt in here. You do need salt, definitely. Um, we'll probably a little more on that, yeah. Salt. And then, um, but then things kind of like, I don't know, like what were you planning to add into it on top of it? Well, we got some baking soda for the rise. Right? Okay. So this is the dry component of it. So we gotta have that for sure. And then the, the, the magic though. The magic. The magic is in the wet components. The wet components, we got this amazing cream style corn. Okay, you mm. can't get the regular dry corn, it gotta be the cream style corn. It's the wetness to it, it gives the moisture to the cornbread. It's delicious. Okay, put some of that in there. Yeah. For all you haters who like your cornbread sweet, you know what? Watch another episode, all right? Here we go. <laughs> we got some sweet cornbread and we got buttermilk. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. you know when you add some buttermilk, you're going to have a good time. Right here. That's what I'm saying. All right? So add some buttermilk to that. As you're doing that, it's actually really interesting that you add buttermilk because I said the OG recipe is just cornmeal and all that. Yeah. But um, ever since uh, cornbread became a little bit more southern, mm -hmm. they started adding different components like what you're doing right now. Yeah. Where... Um, they used what they had uh, in the surrounding areas. Um, because if you didn't know, mm. buttermilk actually comes from making butter. It's mm. the waste product, if you want to call it. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, they would add buttermilk to it. And what's this other thing you're adding? This, what's beautiful about the old days is that they didn't waste anything. Now that you throw away all this leftover stuff, they took the old Ooh. stuff and then made something beautiful out of it. But that was buttermilk. And then you gotta have oil, vegetable oil. Vegetable oil, what it does is that it keeps the it keeps the flour from you know drying up, and making it all nasty. So the the oil is so important. It keeps the moisture there, and it makes it nice and soft and just tender as you drink it, or as you as, as you eat it. Oh, you nasty! Oh, you know, right? And then for the spice, gotta get the jalapeno. Two jalapenos, diced. Whoa! Up. Yeah. yeah. That's not traditional, is it? It's not traditional at all. That's what I'm saying. This is why this recipe is. Bougie to the max, guys. That's cool. What about these eggs? Do we add these too? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. This is the binding agent. This yeah. is for the, the eggs and the... Why don't you pull the over for me? It's to... Yeah, the binding single gun. hand. Oh, whatever. Single Let's hand. Get over it. Alright. Did I get the whisk? Yes, sir. But I actually like that you're kind of bringing all these together. I know, like, originally the original recipe is just cornmeal mm -hmm. and then just water. Yeah. But if... Like, we're really thinking about it. It's like lots of, like, humble ingredients really coming together. And we're, we're making something out of what originally would not have uh, been used or have ever kind of tossed away. Yeah. Right? Um, but... I get some cheese, too. There's oh, yeah. For well, sure. Because we're going authentic, right? Yeah, this is... We're going, we're going, we're going taste. Here. It's all about the taste. <laughs> You know, you know, cheese is anybody who adds cheese to anything is a winner in my book. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you mm -hmm. don't have cheese in your food, then there's something wrong with you. Yeah. Mm. Got it. So, um, yeah, like I don't know. Like, do we uh, are we just doing cornbread here, or like what's uh? Well, you know, 
what's so cool about this since we're talking about Thanksgiving mm -hmm. since we're talking about like the the whole picture of the church and breaking bread the beautiful thing about cornbread is that you can you can put so many different ingredients into it and make it come out even better and, and it's very similar to the, how the church works everybody in their own separate things they're just by themselves and they're just they're great by themselves but when you put them together and you create something awesome out of it that's the church you know it's a reminder of me from um, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It talks about each of us, we have our own gifts, and we want to use them to serve each other as good stewards that God's, you know, of, of God's very grace. Everyone's been given a gift, you know? Bring it mm -hmm. together, combine it, make it into something beautiful. It doesn't seem like it's beautiful at first, but when you put a little touch of God mm -hmm. in there, mm, 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 it's going to be good, I promise you. No, I think I love that kind of analogy of different ingredients as to similar to that of different people, members of a church, because um, you know each component here. It's whether it's part of the original or kind of like something that you kind of add later. It's this idea of that nothing goes to waste. Everything has a purpose. Everything has intention. And even things, even people were like, oh yeah, you like you don't belong in here. You have your cheese. You don't belong in cornbread. But it's like hey, like. Let's see, like, let's you know, add part of it, see where it goes with it. Um, so you take the dry component, put it into the wet component, and you just kind of fold it in, okay? Got it. Yeah, fold it in like this, make a nice, clean, little batter. But I didn't show you the most important and most beautiful thing before this. I, I put this in the, uh, in the oven earlier. It's a bacon weed, right, right? So let me show you what that looks like. Can you continue to fold that for Yeah, me? yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, I got this thing in the oven going here. All right. I'm not sure if you can see this. You can tip it to them a little bit. Yeah, it's a bacon weave that you Dang. weave together. And you take all that bacon fat and you create this kind of layer out here for the sides. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pour. That's gonna be like the the ground level for this cornbread. And then you're gonna pour this cornbread batter right on top of it. Let's go. Pop it in the micro oh, pop it in the oven. All right. Pour it in. Boom. So how can you not like this? The idea of it itself is beautiful. I can't wait to get a taste of it. Now, I do have a lot of haters out there because you know people like their cornbread sweet. Again, I say you watch a different channel. Okay, this channel is about savory, it's about bougie, and it's about Goodness, all right? So we got we got the bacon fat. We wrap that around here. And these uh, this is definitely clogging arteries for the for um, the season. Okay. It's Thanksgiving, guys. Once the year comes, it's okay to add a little fat. Okay, you know, all you health freaks out there, get over it. You know what I'm saying? It's just add a little fat to your food. It's gonna be delish. Okay, <coughs> pop this in the oven. Twenty five minutes. Bam! Bam! Power of magic right there. Magic of recipe. We made another batch is what it looks like. Oh, I can't wait to cut this up for you guys. But yeah, that's the beauty. Okay. Awesome. So, yeah, I mean, we, we talked a lot about, like, different components of um, a body and how it has a purpose and intention in a church, like... Um, especially since we're talking today about like the idea of like what does it mean for a member of bodies to be serving another? Like, what does it look like for? How did that look like in the early days of church? What did it look like for early churches to begin to serve one another? Mm. I guess the best passage would be Acts chapter four. You know, when yeah. the the picture, yeah, the picture of the early church. Back then, the key the key picture is that nobody call any of their stuff their own. Everything was give, everything was shared, everything was offered, everything was each other. We sh they shared everything. They, there was no need within the community because if there was a need, those who had some would give the, to the others. That's the idea of giving up your rights, sharing your wealth, sharing your possession. And so the, the community flourished because of the spirit of generosity, the spirit of giving, the spirit of of laying down our right. It's not about what you can give to me, but what I have received from Jesus Christ, and now because of that overflow, I can give you whatever I have, you know, and not feel like I've lost anything because 
I haven't. I've gotten Jesus. Mm. Yeah, no, I was thinking, that's really beautiful that you mentioned because I was really thinking about Acts, and I was like, um, well, we're having people who are beginning to sell possessions to those who are in need. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, what does that look like for us, like, nowadays, where it's like, how should it look like for us within the context of the church? Because clearly, if we're going to church, we're beginning to serve each other in different capacities, like leadership. Uh, what about that of outside the church? Um, do you think that's, like, equal, where we should place emphasis both on serving each other within a church, and then uh, outside church, we kind of just call it like, ah, you know, it's it's my own time. It's true, it's true. You know what? No matter what we do, because we're followers of Jesus Christ, people are not going to understand why we do what we do, right? But First Peter 2, and 12, it tells us that we should live such good lives that though people may not understand it or like it, they will see our good deeds and glorify our Father. And so the, mm-hmm. the, the key here, the way you serve is that you continue to be generous, you continue to be giving, you continue to lay down your rights to the world around you. You live such good lives that people are curious and they question what motivates you, what drives you, what's your foundation, right? And that's, I think that's the best way a Christian can really live out their life for their city or for their community, for their job, wherever they're at. It's trying to go out there and say, you know what, what can I do to make this place better than it is before, right? Yeah. Awesome shirt. <laughs> We're going to jump back. Woo! Okay, okay. I'm just thinking. Do you want me to do a shot where I'm cut digging into it? Okay. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, oh my All the goodness. steam. Yeah. Okay, now you can make a shot. Okay. All right, we got two tries at this, so. Ooh. Very good. So what makes this cornbread so delicious is yeah, again, you get, you can't come at this thinking it's sugar, thinking it's like cake. You gotta come at this thinking like it's a it's a savory bread, right? With bacon, you got some jalapeno, you got the cheese going on in there. So this is this is mixture of just salty, gooey goodness, right? And when you eat it, mmm. It's gonna change your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Is, I think it's the best bread we've made so far. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. No. Don't do any of the other recipes. Just do this one. Yeah. Don't, do, don't do that Eucharist one. That was. Cool, man. Um. Oh man, I can't stop eating this. But um, yeah, the other question I was gonna ask you is like, so if we're serving each other, and you kind of mentioned a little bit about like having Christ kind of as the motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, what should be our heart, heart posture? Because like, surely there are times when we want to serve others and like really put our step, foot forward for others, but then there are times like you know we don't um, like. Or even we're not in the right place for it. Yeah. Like, what should be our heart posture in different seasons of our life? Yeah. Let's say we're in the highs and lows. Like, how should we? Yeah. I think I think our posture is always motivated and driven by the gospel, right? Driven by what Christ has done. Um, Jesus Christ, He gave up His life. He surrendered His rights. He considered equality with God nothing to be grasped, but instead became a man. Became obedient to death, the Bible says. So our posture should be a posture of selflessness, a posture of serving, a posture of obedience to God in every situation. So the question we should always be asking is, how can I serve rather than how can this person serve me? The question we should be asking is, in what way can I give up my rights rather than how can my rights be honored in this time? You know. And so when we have that posture. I think we're truly reflecting the heart and the, the beauty of who Christ is in our lives. So I can't stop eating this month. It's so good. <laughs> um, yeah, I love that. It, it, especially with the heart posture of like giving up our own rights. But um, maybe a word for those in like different parts of lives where, uh, or different areas of their lives where some of them are more like hey if I'm I'm ready to serve 
like, how do I go about that? And then maybe those who are a little bit more hesitant where like, oh, I'm not really ready to give up my rights or like, maybe I'm not really ready to serve. I don't think that's kind of like where I'm called right now. Like, where do you think areas of opportunities are for these people of different uh, places? Well, if you're not ready to serve, if you feel like you're not there in that space yet, you're totally fine. You know? The walk of the Christian life is a journey. It's not a boom, you're there. Okay? So if you're, you're in that position, I want to I wanna just recommend maybe something very simple. And I got this last Sunday from one of our sisters. She led praise and she kind of did this call to worship. And she said, maybe the best thing we can do before we come to church is just pray who we can sit next to. This, this concept of sitting next to somebody and being able to communicate and engage in their life, it's a beautiful thing. It's a way of you giving. And just your, your place of seating is such an important part. So I think that's a, that's a great place to start. Um, if you're more uh, introverted and you just can't deal with that, you know what? Why don't you just walk around on campus and figure out, hey, what can I do to clean up this place a little bit? How can I make this place a little bit cleaner or better? Or stay a little more clean? You, know? you give your service to the place around you. Okay. But for those of you guys who are, you're ready, you're in it, you know, you're, you're, you're going home, you're, you're ready to say, you know, one part suffers, we suffer together, one part is on it, we rejoice together, um, if that's you, then my, my recommendation is, hey, think about membership, think about joining this community, this family, and saying, you know what, I'm ready to lay down my, my life to carry out God's work here with this community, or think about baptism, you know. Sometimes you get kind of nervous, but baptism is just a, it's a sign. It's a sign saying that I'm willing to be identified as a Christian in this really broken world. And I want to be identified with Christ in his death and his resurrection. You know, some people, they get kind of nervous with that because they have a commitment. But one way that you can go about serving, if you're ready, is baptism. And so, we really encourage you for that, you know, membership or baptism. It will be a great way for you to be involved in the process of giving your life to this community. Yeah, very much so. I love it that everything that you mentioned at different stages, um, it's kind of like the cornbread, right? Everyone has different roles and each of it is beautiful that comes together yeah. to a beautiful picture. Yeah, so um, but yeah, aside from that, um, that's it for today. Hope you kind of understand a little bit more about what it means to be um, a member of church and continue just to serve each other as brothers and sisters. Um, Next video, we're going to do, and it's going to be the final one, on uh, this idea of membership and within the body. And it's going to be, um, in December, we're going to do a video on what it means to begin to gift, for, uh, gift each other and, and to um, give to one another. So stay tuned for that. Hope you had a good one. Peace. Like what you see? Come check us out on our YouTube channel. We're called to love God, love people, and serve the world. We post regularly every week, Wednesdays and Sundays, 12.30 p.m. for English ministry. Check out our website at www.wearetruelove.com. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button 